In this chapter of organic compounds, uh, this is divided into three parts. The first part it refers to what are organic compounds, that's mainly carbon-based compounds, and why carbon is so essential to create these organic compounds based life. So in living organism, you will find organic compounds in very simple single carbon, two carbon, or thousands or millions of carbon long molecules such as DNA and so on. So the uniqueness of carbon comes from not only it is kind of a neutral and also in terms of electronegativity, but also it can make four, up to four bonds. And it can make linear structures, ring-like structures, and it can be stable in like small, short molecule and long molecules. Understand that part. Once you understand that, the second part of this chapter refers to isomers. Isomers are molecules that have the same molecular formula but different structural formula. So they are grouped into three kinds of isomers. The structural isomer is the number one. The second one is geometric isomer with a carbon-carbon double bond. And the last part is uh, optical isomer or mirror images like you would find the left-handed version and the right-handed version. So when you go through this, try to also think of or read about what are the examples of biological molecules that are present in these isomeric forms and what is the significance of them? Lastly, the third part of this chapter talks about functional groups. Functional groups are simple chemical groups attached to a carbon compound that affect the property of the carbon compound based on their nature and how many of them are present and where they are present. Okay? These are the characteristics of functional groups. And you would find mm, several functional groups such as hydroxyl, carbonyl, carboxyl, phosphate, sulfhydryl, amine, and methyl groups. So when you go through these functional groups, try to understand are they polar or nonpolar? Are they acidic or are they basic? Or they are, have other properties such as do they dissociate proton or accept protons? That's what will contribute to them as, as an acidic or basic. Once you understand that, you want to think about molecules that contain these functional groups. Because the reason an amino acid is an amino acid because they have amine group and an acid group. Or a fatty acid is an acid because they have an acid group and a fat component. Because that is so essential for you to understand the functional groups before we move on to biological molecules, which is the next chapter.